All right, everyone. We, we're on a roll right now. We got another advertiser coming in. We are so rich. Money is flying in. Pete might keep his job. We're like the stock market during COVID. Just keeps going up. Just keeps going up. Today's uh, uh, guest is Matt Randall. He's the founder and CEO of Spot, Life by Spot. And I actually got to meet Matt. I would say like, I remember the weather being cold still. So I think it was probably like, six, nine months ago in New York City. I was randomly there for work. I think you you and your colleague were there for work and we talked on Instagram and we went to that atrocious shopping center known as Hudson Yards and uh, we had some coffee and we talked about your business and I was totally fascinated by it because like it is perfect for someone like me because I'm a essentially a weekend warrior with running and hiking and things of that nature. And I was like, wow, I didn't realize how many people this actually applies to. And I remember telling my brother, I remember telling yep. a bunch of people right after it. So I'd love to get like a, a little background on the business and I have a bunch of questions for you. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you guys for having us on. We look forward to supporting group chat. Uh, big followers of you guys, uh, the team, and you know, a bunch of my buddies that are uh, CEOs or you know, big listeners to you guys. And what you guys talk about always makes us laugh uh, pretty much every single day, but also super relatable to our own lives. It's almost um, like we're paying so, you, you know, for an advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Um, you know, from our side, so Spot really originated this idea of health insurance is at unprecedented levels with the cost of it. Deductibles are skyrocketing. People are losing their jobs, et cetera. And it's only going to be going up. Um, so we created Spot, this idea of this affordability um, across what is the number one reason people file bankruptcy in the United States um, is medical bills. And so Crazy. for $25 a month, uh, we cover 20000 in medical bills related to any injury that you may have. So if you get injured three times a year, we cover 60000 in medical bills. And the whole idea is to live life to the fullest. Um, so we joke around that if Red Bull or GoPro create an insurance company, that's what Spot would be. And so the whole basis behind it for 25 bucks a month in California or about 40 other states around the United States, um, we cover you no matter if you're changing a light bulb in your house um, right now and fall off a ladder, if you're um, you know, cl- walking down the stairs, if you're climbing Everest. Um, one of our ambassadors, Agent Ballinger, actually has climbed Everest nine times, wow. three times without oxygen. Um, and so we cover everyone um, really anywhere in the world that they are. Um, no matter what that is. So our whole idea was instead of the GoFundMe, instead of everything like that, for only 25 bucks a month, no matter what happens to you in relation to an injury, we cover pretty much all of your medical bills up to 20 grand. So, uh, but yeah, that's who we are. And it's been a hell of a ride to date. And, and what's interesting is, is like, to me, health insurance is such a scam. And I've always had so many challenges and the two times that I've had to go to the hospital in my entire life, my, my, I find out my, the health insurance I have is trash and my deductible is like (laughs) insane. I'm paying $500 a month as a healthy non-smoker. And when I get there, they're like, Oh, uh, we're going to need 10 grand today. And I'm like, what? Yeah. And, and, and (sighs) I remember asking you this question and it's interesting. The, Number one reason people go bankrupt, like you said, is because of, of, of uh, medical insurance, deductible or health health related uh, costs. And does this mean that someone who doesn't even have health insurance could potentially use this in some way? Because like I'm guessing your primary customer are people mm-hmm. like myself who are somewhat active. You know, I'm running on the street now. Like I run down the middle of Hollywood Boulevard now because there's no one on there. <laughs> I'm going to get, I might get mowed down by a bus one day because I just think there's no right. one else on the street. But what about people that don't have health insurance? How, where do they fall into this? Yeah. So, you know, it's for anyone that really, no matter if you have a, you know, I would say if you work for Google and you, you know, have 20 million bucks in the bank, you probably don't need spot. Um, but for us, when we look at it, that's not the majority of the population. Uh, most people in America don't have, most people in America have less than $500 in the bank account at any given time. Um, and so how we really look at it, no matter if you have health insurance or you don't have health insurance, spots there for you. Um, and we wanted to make the price as affordable as we possibly could 
um, because we understand there's a lot of other bills in other people's lives. And once we strip out the illness, once we strip out those things on the product and we really focus on why people are going to hospitals and why these things are happening um, and where these medical bills are coming from, once you strip out cancer and you strip out these other things, you can actually make this incredibly affordable for the general population. Right. So if someone were to be playing basketball on the weekend, tear their ACL, how much would they be out if they didn't have health insurance? ACL will cost you about fifteen to twenty thousand um, dollars. Now we cover, uh, and that's one of the reasons we came up with the twenty thousand dollar price tag, um, and uh, to be able to allow people to know that most medical bills will fit within twenty thousand. Yeah. And on top of that, we also covered. We don't talk about this a lot, but we covered ten thousand of physical rehab as well um, outside of that. So. If you do tear your ACL and you have to go to physical rehab, a lot of people don't realize that physical rehab is very expensive, and we cover up to 10000 in bills uh, associated with that as well. Wow. You know, it's interesting. I made a pledge to myself when I turned 30, I'll never play basketball again. Same. It, because every person I know that plays basketball over 30 tears their ACL. Or Achilles. Or like, one of the two. Yeah, yeah, and it is devastating coming back. Actually, my buddy Matt who uh, listens to the pod is, I remember he tore his ACL. Yeah. And I mean, he's still limping around. Poor guy. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't take the rehab yeah, if, seriously. If you're not a, I feel like if you're not a professional athlete and don't have access to the best doctors in the world, you're going to be limping the rest of your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and so well, the other interesting thing you guys do, which I think there's obviously a lot of uh, founders and, and execs that listen to the podcast, you guys have like a business to business service, which is super interesting. And I think you should, shared with me an example at a ski resort that people can add insurance for their day they're up there, correct? Yeah, for sure. You know, you guys talk about the startup world at all uh, for a, a lot. And uh, I've been in it for a number of years. You know, with these direct to consumer products, as we all know, there's customer acquisition costs associated, right? There's a CAC associated, and you're seeing the likes of Peloton and others just blowing, you know, their minds and blowing their wallets trying to kind of buy uh, growth. And so what we found early days is we're not going to focus on this, you know, $25 a month product that's been selling word of mouth. There's another side of the business that's been really interesting for us um, that has zero customer acquisition costs that the scalability has been unbelievable. But that is working with places like um, ski resorts to where for an extra four to five dollars on a lift ticket, we cover you for that day skiing um, up to 20,000 in medical bills. Um, we have partners from that to, you know, big cycling events. We have at marathons. We actually, funny enough, our very first partner ever was a marathon. Um, about 15,000 people ran in it and we sold over a thousand policies just in that one marathon. Wow, and that blew my mind uh, that people would buy spots for that. So for us was, that's been a big kind of growth side of the business uh, because it's like travel insurance at the bottom. Uh, but that's been a hell of a lot of fun to kind of dive into because one of the partners we just signed on that we're doing that's going to be too much fun, um, probably lose our ass on it. But uh, marketing should be fun. And that is uh, a company's created a drone that you can get in and fly. Wow. Um, and so you can fly it around. It goes 60 miles an hour and all these things. And so we're going to be covering everyone doing that. And it's going to be recreational um, to do uh, <laughs> that, to where it's that, that like high fly. Gonna... I feel like Pete needs that. <laughs> yeah. so, I don't know if I'll yeah, do that I, way. Can I come? <laughs> I've been, we've been known to throw our chips all in uh, into certain things and that that'll be fun um like i said we may lose our ass on that one but uh you know we cover everything from like you know walking up your stairs to a man flying drone but yeah the partnerships has been a lot of fun across ski you know across you know man flying drones to you know fitness apps to a number of other things amazing and you know i recently as i got older i finally this last year got life insurance and I'm yeah. becoming grown up. So uh, I, this is perfect for someone like me because like, I don't want to deal with, uh, God forbid I get injured, just even the deductible. I don't care. 25 bucks for me is totally worth it. So if people want to sign up, how do they do it? Will you go to life, lifebyspot.com? Yeah, so right now, um, lifebyspot.com, and it literally takes 30 seconds. Uh, we ask you what state you're live in. We ask you what your age is, um, and then that's it. 
Um, you just fill out uh, your own information. Uh, we don't ask. It's probably the simplest way to buy insurance in the world. Um, and then that's it. And uh, awesome. we try to keep it as simple as possible. And then you have a place to give us credit. So that if you the, if referral yeah. code, please put group chat. And uh, you're also being very generous. For every person that signs up, you're going to donate uh, 10 masks uh, to uh, the place where we're donating, which is hashtag lunch bag and the VA hospital in West LA. So uh, thank you for helping us with that. Uh, we've been trying to get masks out to our community. So it's much appreciated. Yeah. So at the very least, if you think you're invincible, at least sign up for the sake of donating masks to, to people in Los Angeles. Yeah, no, that's an awesome addition to not going bankrupt. You're also helping the community. Yes. <laughs> like, what about if you get injured in a scooter, on a scooter? Yeah. 100% we cover. Oh, my God. Pete, so. it's cheaper for me to buy that because he's driving to work in his stupid scooter. I'd rather just buy him that insurance. God forbid something happens. I'm covered. I'm signing hey, both hey. of us up today. You say no more. <laughs> We're I'll, let you, I'll let you know this. We've talked to Bird. We've talked to them. We offered to do to where people could add it for 10 cents on every single one of their scooter rides. And we were told no. Oh, my God. Um, they're fucking idiots. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is um, from those <laughs> angles. But we truly believe no matter if it's scooter, no matter what it is, uh, we got yells back. Yeah, that's clever. That, I would use that all the time. All day I would yeah. to take it on. Oh, my God. Hey. Amazing. Well, thank you we'll for see. your time and thank you for supporting the podcast. Yeah, sure. I remember when I met you, I, I, I was texting my brother. I'm like, man, we have some incredibly smart, successful listeners because I know this is your second go around as an entrepreneur. You had a very successful exit on your first one. So thank you for supporting us and spreading the word. Perfect. Well, thank you, guys. We're uh, huge fans and keep up the great work. And uh, thanks for letting us come on and tell uh, your listeners about Spot. Cool. So everyone, lifebyspot.com, referral code, group chat. He's donating masks. We're going to post it on our social media our newsletter. So if you can't remember lifebyspot.com, you should definitely get insurance because you're, you're a dummy. dummy. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Thank you. Okay, guys. Uh, let's talk about the roundup. So it's time. It's time to, you know... Let these unleash two Pete. <laughs> unleash these two idiots onto the world. And bearded Taylor, a bearded quarantine Taylor. Taylor looks. So we were talking. Very quarantine. A, we were talking about uh, doing something on YouTube that kind of mimics what you see uh, by some other podcasts, and uh, they wanted to do like maybe the Tuesdays and Thursdays that the podcast is not on. So I was like, oh, that's a great idea. You guys should do it. I'm like, we're pretty busy, but like you two guys kick it off. And then like, when we have time, one of us will hop on. So I hopped on on the, uh, the first one and I wanted to deep dive on a topic that I've been dealing with a lot recently, yep. which is a lot of people telling me how much they hate Taylor. People, so, people hate Taylor? People hate Taylor. They think he's arrogant. Our listeners? Spoiled brat. I mean, it's in our comments. People in actively, our actively hate Taylor. <laughs> hate him. Oh. Everywhere. So I'm not going to spoil it. To be fair, I haven't seen these comments anywhere. D is telling me anonymous sources. Uh, uh, they're there. I, I do <laughs> not to show you. <laughs> As somebody who runs accounts around here, they're there. I've gotten <laughs> phone calls. Let's just leave oh, it at that. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to, I don't want to spoil it, but we go, go go to our YouTube page. We, we talk about that. We're talking talking about this guy thought I was uh, being emotional because I posted some quote on my fucking Instagram story. Did We're not going to talk about that either. You have to go watch. <laughs> yeah, you Let me tease it. it. Let me tease it. So we what talked about that. Business, got emotional. Taylor? <laughs> and then uh, I didn't notice till 10 minutes in, <laughs> Pete was rolling a joint the entire time and it then took, try to, trying to light it up. <laughs> it took for me to bring out the lighter before he goes, are Do you, you a, smoke weed? You rolled joints. It was at your desk too, drama. <laughs> <laughs> well, you left, so I took over your what office. What's going on? Right? It didn't smell like weed in the office. The well, I do have a, a lot peace. of weed from Golden State. Okay, got it. <laughs> yes. You see, it was you 420. roll joints and smoke weed? I didn't, Did you I take, didn't smoke. Did you take my Golden State stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, you you bet your ass. That's He's luxury stealing your weed, weed and yeah, rolling it on that's my not, desk. That's not for people like you. I, I, honestly, I... I you got to revisit this minivan situation. Yeah, you can't look, be smoking look, weed. Look, it was 420. We needed the content. But I saw it available. Why don't you find some, like, cheap shit? Why There's no cheap shit around here. That's the most expensive We smoked it all. And you act like you market. can't get any more. Okay, go it? watch the pot. Did you smoke it or you threw it away? 
Why would I throw it away? I think it's 420. That <laughs> would be a disgrace. I didn't smoke it in the office because D said I can't do that because we'd get a fine. I did. Uh, I actually smoked weed yesterday for 420. Wow. wow. Yeah. Did you? How'd it go? Get. It was great. Like yeah. a pen? No. Um, Pre roll. Wow. From Golden Look State. At you guys with the analog weed. Yeah. Old school style. I don't. Honestly, the vape thing, it just doesn't feel real. No. Yeah, I get it. I'm not here. It hits different. Yeah. I really enjoy. Yeah, I'm sure Wiz Khalifa feels the same way. Yes. <laughs> Everybody else is fine with it. <laughs> you fucking weirdos. I had a okay. tequila, a joint. You must have slept out- great. I sat outside and then I watched the last ep- the Sunday's episode of Homeland. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that show has gotten so good. Yeah. Um, so everyone tune in. Yeah. To YouTube. And YouTube. Where do they find it? Right. Yeah. IGTV. Okay. We get if anyone both. uses IGTV. We got to get verified. Once you get verified, we'll put the whole episode on IGTV. But the whole thing is on YouTube. Okay. We only get up to 15 minutes on Instagram. So. Got okay. it. Okay. okay. All right. Well, we're just pumping out content over here. Yeah. yeah. Looks- no end in sight. Uh, speaking of content with no end in sight, how about this Michael Jordan documentary? I, I got to start with a complaint. Okay. Wow. Uh, this thing had so much hype. Everyone was so excited, myself included. I couldn't couldn't even watch it. What? I don't know how to watch it. I'm saying I don't know how to watch oh, it. You're oh, you're not ESPN. I was like, oh, you didn't know where to find it. I don't know. Like, oh, I, I have you're ESPN. criticizing the content. No, I have ESPN uh, the app. I was literally about I, to fight you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I opened it up and it said live, like, please put you don't in have your a TV? cable provider. I don't have cable. Wow, he cut the cord. Oh, well, what, what, real what 2020? You're still out here smoking actual weed. <laughs> I'm wrong. <really, laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I have no cable. So this but explains, Plus, what this explains a lot. The viewership for this was only six and a half million viewers, which Anand was hyping up 20 million viewers. Yeah, I thought yeah, it was thought on it Netflix, Netflix too. So well, they don't, they didn't. Uh, they're going to release it on Netflix after they air the. Fight. So I have friends internationally. They got it on Netflix. Netflix yeah. international on Monday it. night. Yeah. So we saw it Sunday night. Monday night, everyone internationally. That's so poorly it. handled. Yeah, you he, have one of the biggest documentary moments of the year, and it's on some fucking. You have to have direct TV. Yeah, you would think Thank Bob God. Iger would have at least oh left them with a strategy on how to roll yes. out the biggest piece of content that they've had. Well, in the last if you noticed, time. if you noticed that it was produced by ESPN and Netflix, so Netflix probably foot the bill for the whole thing, and pretty much probably paid a lot of money for ESPN to air it, and then unfortunately, everyone else is going to watch it in six months. Yeah, so I think it airs in Netflix US in like three months after the last episode. But why would it not be on ESPN Plus? You know, I, I don't know I if you watched. I know you don't. Do you have ESPN cable. Plus? Yeah. You pay for that? Yes. That's stupid. For <laughs> stupid moments like this. <laughs> ESPN here I got Plus. Fucked. I think it was, I mean, first of all, the, the first two episodes aired on Sunday and it was absolutely incredible. I literally hung on to every word. I felt like I was watching a game seven of NBA finals. I got joke. goosebumps. Yeah. Straight God up goosebumps. Damn. And watching afterwards it. you want to talk about like being pumped up, motivated. Like if that, if those first two hours didn't get you excited about like accomplishing something in your life. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what will. I'll be honest. I, I said right before when we're interviewing Matt for spot insurance, I never wanted to play basketball after 30 yeah. just because I didn't want to get injured. I literally was like, man, I need to order a hoop. I just want to go shoot basket. It was just like, it was so like, I mean, for, for, I think our age group, Michael Jordan is probably the greatest man of all time. I don't think there's anyone. Greatest man. Greatest man. man. Great, greatest like, man of all time. But he wasn't kind of like a bad person. But like growing up, who was the ultimate person for someone yeah. like in, in our age group? There's never been a singular person that is bigger than Michael Jordan. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Like I tried he, to find a hole, but there is. There was. I remember in the '90s they used to say he was the most uh, recognizable silhouette silhouette in the world because yeah. of the bald head. Yeah, there was a time because his cologne that he had was just his. Bald head. Oh yeah, my brother had that. I, used, <laughs> yeah. I had it too. <laughs> yeah. I think he did. That cologne was like the number one selling cologne in the world at some point. Yeah. And and so it's interesting to see like I I, I really started thinking about like the the business implications of Michael Jordan. Uh, obviously, the biggest credit I would give to the NBA exploding would be Magic and Larry in the '80s. They they were the first to like really yep. make it popular in America. Michael Jordan made basketball global. Cause like, you know, he's in France and China. Like no one was watching that shit before Michael Jordan. Sure. 
there would be no Nike as we know it today. Sure, Nike existed pre Michael Jordan, but like I had never owned a pair of Nikes. Mm-hmm. No one was walking around with Nikes till Michael Jordan came around. Yeah, um, Gatorade. Hey, I mean, funny I mean, Gatorade. Uh, Space Jam. Experience Space I had. Jam. <laughs> I read, I remember I was like 12 or 13, that Michael Jordan's favorite Gatorade flavor was grape. And I hated grape. Yeah, grape flavor. was the worst. And so I you forced just dealt myself with it. to drink it. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's real influence. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Okay, so it was everything you hoped it would be. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was so cool. It was awesome. so good. I, I won't just, spoil it, but you just got to watch it. And the best part is the first two episodes. We're kind of, if you followed his career, we kind of knew most of it. And then they gave a little tidbits. The next episodes are the tapes that weren't released. And uh, yeah. And I'm I think. so disappointed. My one, I'll give my one critique on the document, documentary. It featured uh, all these other people in his life, which was great. But like, I don't give a shit about them. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit about Scottie Pippen. Like. I, I'm sorry he signed a bad deal. He's But I mean it's all in the context of Jordan. Yeah. I, I will say Pippen got a lot of run in the first the Scotty Pippen show. Yeah. This is the Michael this is last dance. Yeah. We don't want to hear about He should have done a whole episode. That thing about the uh his rate though, his his shitty deal seemed to go kind of viral. Yeah, because they made such a big deal about it because Jerry Krause, who's probably the most hated person in the world. I fucking hate Jerry. Yeah. Everyone hates him. Don't even know who Jerry and you know is. What sucks Jerry. is he died a year ago. Can't even defend any of the stories. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Too just, bad. I mean, yeah. don't be a dick. And, don't be a dick. And yeah. Just the one thing uh, that you pointed out on Twitter, he had a glass of uh, tequila. Yeah. Jordan did during the entire interview. The, the other, yeah, just sipping on his, own, his own Sincora yeah. tequila that he has. The other really interesting He's thing really was the D drink too. of champions. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, trust me, I went next door to the liquor store right before because I wanted to watch it. I ordered Nice Guy, Delilah, I had tequila. Like, I made an event out of this. Yeah. The same way people got dressed up for Teddy, Teddy Riley Babyface, I was excited for this. And they didn't, they're like, we do have it. We do get it. We just don't have it right now. And more more interesting thing, he did this interview, and I, Matt Belinsky pointed this out, which is really interesting. This guy is doing probably the most important piece of sports media ever, yeah. right? He is wearing like a shallow V neck and camo shorts, and doesn't give a fuck. A no. per- he's not even matching. Yeah, he literally is not matching. Yeah, it just doesn't matter at that he point. Doesn't. You can literally do anything. Yes, he's Michael Jordan. Could just wear anything, do anything. I mean, he's Michael never Jordan, been. He's never been known for his fashion style. I agree, but like, like well, his suits were no. His suits. Kobe used to wear those suits his rookie year because of Michael Jordan. Yeah, and that's when he got like. Shit it on, like, oh, you're just a wannabe. Yeah. The beret and was the hoop hot, the earring though. was a thing, too. Yeah. That, that, that's, do you think Michael Jordan is happy? Think, Hell yeah. yeah he's happy. <laughs> you think he's happy? kidding me? <laughs> he, he seems to me, and I every time, every time I feel this way, I feel like I must be wrong. He seems to me like he did it. Like, he accomplished. Yes. He, everyone, he's the GOAT yes. forever. Yeah. You just get to live. You're rich as shit. No yeah. one really argues, except for, for fun, yeah. that you're the greatest. I, I don't even, yeah, I don't even think, like, me being the biggest LeBron fan, because I just think he's just an, an incredible human being on, on top of being a great athlete. Like, I know LeBron's not Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan yeah. is just a different yeah, it must species. be a great life. He just smoke cigars and play golf. And, and he's like, yeah, I mean you, he's competitive and everything. Like they highlight that in the in the film, how you know in golf or ping pong or whatever it is, he's always competitive. Yeah, it's just so nice to know you're like a god walking earth. Yeah, you got to be happy. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, he doesn't Forever. like it'll never be challenged. <laughs> and he's never he's never like really been suffocated by the idea of social media and the new media age. We don't hear anything from him besides this. You still have like, Travis Scott with a new pair of your shoes. Yeah, yeah. You still Drake. relevant as shit. Right. You still relevant out, without needing to be. Active. Have to do anything. I think when it comes out uh, in the, later in the documentary at the tail end, he was just too famous that he couldn't go outside. Yeah. So throughout the season, he was just hanging out with the security guards, and that's it. So maybe then he might have been a little. Start yeah. quor- he was quarantined back in 97. For he was sure, quarantined yeah, before sure. we got quarantined. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, well, listen, I'll follow up in uh, November, and I'll let you guys <laughs> yeah. know. I'll let you guys know what I thought. I can't believe they didn't have it on ESPN+. Plus. I, mean, I the, can't believe you have ESPN+. Plus. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's I think, even funnier. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> what did you get it for, the Kobe stuff? There had what? to be either Kobe the fight, stuff there was or a like fight. a UFC oh, fight. There was, there was, there was one fight. big fight yeah. on it. Yeah. 
But I mean, come on. And I, I can't believe you haven't Netflix. seen it. <laughs> and then there's a little tag that Facebook sponsored or whatever. So I, of course, looked at Facebook. There's nothing. Yeah. So I'll check in in November. That's right. Um, speaking of Travis Scott, the did you see that Travis Scott is adjusting better than anyone to quarantine life? And he has decided to go on a world tour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I know you might be thinking, what the fuck, Travis? Are yeah. you, do you have a death wish? Yeah. Well, no, he doesn't. He's going to be going on a world tour via Fortnite. So he's going to have tours in Fortnite. And they're selling, I think, outfits and stuff if you want to buy it. Merch. Attend the concert. I mean. This is going to crush, right? Is, April 23rd, yeah. you can buy. Uh, April 23rd, 7 p.m. Eastern is the show inside of Fortnite. And on as of April 21st, you'll have access to outfits. Uh other Scott themed goodies, both in shop and earned through astronomical challenges. It's called astronomical. I mean, like, is it a character performing or is he performing? I've never seen. I didn't see the marshmallow thing, so yeah, I don't know how character. it goes. Oh, I think it's a character. Oh, so wait, no, I think it's a virtual. Obviously, we should have watched the marshmallow one or did some research, so, but, but I think a, it's the not. The character is the one doing it, but yeah. he's the one rapping. Yeah, yeah, it's real voice. Why would you even do the real voice? Just put the album, hit play, and let these dumb idiots think he's performing. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what they're doing, probably. <laughs> you could just take a recording from one of his concerts. So he probably collected, no joke, $20 million to do this. Yeah. And he's not leaving his house. Why would he ever go on tour again? Unless it's just to get groupies. I mean, look, they're saying concerts might not be back till 2022. Do this seven times and oh, yeah. retire. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, but who's really going to keep going to Fortnite to get this? I'm I think going. you would be. Shocked. You're going a hundred percent. I'm. Uh, it's, How are you getting there? All you got to do is I say. Don't know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna get there though. It's not just a bus you get on or a channel. You play. <laughs> this is tougher than the Michael you Jordan yeah. documentary. That's like me trying to get to the Michael Jordan <laughs> yes. documentary. Okay. And worse. Okay. Does anyone know? Well, let's document this. It's April 23rd. That's what two days from now. Yes. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to figure out how to get Fortnite. I'm going to figure out how to get to the show. I wear my. I have my Astro World hat on yeah, right now. Oh, wear wow, my merch. Ready. I'm going to yes. get a call. Pete, I can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you bring you your Xbox? Over? Virtual merch too. Yeah, I'll buy the whole outfit. I where do you even put it? Is it like a skin? It's on your character. Do you have yeah. to play the game to watch? No, you just have a login. You gotta make a login. He's gotta no, figure it you, out. Yeah. No, there's parts of Fortnite. I mean, you don't know what you're I'm, talking about. I, I really don't. But <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. You're very confident over here. No, because I know on 2K you can do this. You can like go to the park and like hang out with other oh, people. Oh yeah, I'll go to the park. Is that the same on Fortnite where you can just go to an area and hang out? I don't know. I'll figure out if you can get on Fortnite, I can get on Fortnite. Do not equate ourselves here <laughs> when it comes to technology like Let that. Let me see. Let's see who's at the show. I'll see if you're at the show oh, or not. I can show up at the show. Yeah. I'll be there. Where are we dropping, huh? Yeah. I'll be there. Don't worry. He, he said, yeah. He said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're dropping what? Yeah. <laughs> you know what we dropping? Um, to Noble? Okay. Are we ready to move on? <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, I'm good. <laughs> okay, let's talk about... Uh, some Corona stuff. Um, in the next move by Donald Trump for uh, for the stoppage of or slowage of Corona, uh, all immigration is banned. Great I'm move. I'm not mad at it. I mean, look, I'm not mad at it. I think this is probably an easy win for Trump to get what he's always wanted. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Make your yeah. base happy. Yeah. Who cares? It's a smart move. I mean, immigration effectively is banned at the moment. Yeah. There was emergency this immigration allowed. For whatever reason, and I don't know what they're deeming emergency, but now this it's like bringing in extra doctors. Yeah, now this is yeah. It's God forbid it. we need more doctors, so they can't come. But um, it is from a marketing perspective, it got a lot of big headlines because people didn't know that immigration has, has effectively stopped. It's a great move. It's it's great campaign move. Yeah. Like his base, Let's who see. already wants to reopen states. Let's yeah. get the. Illegal immigrants out and yeah. stop the terrorists from coming in. Yeah. Crossing that Honduran border. Yeah, whatever. I mean, look, if you're immigrating right now, yeah, it's poor just, timing. It's yeah. pure you marketing. Know? That's, that's know the, the tweet. Room. And he tweeted it with none of the policy being explained. Yeah. It was just he was bored, sitting at home, saw the market went down yesterday. And said, I'm banning immigration, stock market. Yeah, I think it's great. <laughs> okay, well, listen. Good for you, Donnie. Um... Next up, I have a question. Like, I'm going to say something really offensive to some people, not to anyone in this room. Yeah. 
Do you think that there's something about the heat and the humidity of the South that makes people dumber? I think it's the food. <laughs> Is it the food? Yeah. I think that you could honestly do a study that people are just a little bit more like wild in the South. Like so, a Florida man challenge. Like that's not totally a joke. So so I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go out on a limb and I'll say all warm weather climate areas that are very tropical or yeah. like beach friendly. Yeah. I think have stupid people. You're There's saying they're like humidity. ditching school to hang out at the beach? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, no offense to the Hawaiians, but like, you know, we're not, not a lot of rocket science coming out of Hawaii. Obama did. But I mean, Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like, okay, one guy. They just took off all one guy. Yeah, one guy. <laughs> There's something about the humidity, I think. Yeah, I don't know how to pinpoint it either, but it's it, the there's South. a certain characteristic about the South I'd that like to see a study leads that. to these consistent things. Yeah, so the reason I ask that is because, number one, we've seen Florida reopen beaches. People are all over it. And now there's already states, Georgia and other states are, are Texas, I think, yeah. are looking, are already starting to relax restrictions. I saw that in, I think it's Georgia, there's movie theaters are open on Friday. So he, interesting enough, the, the governor wants... Uh, he's allowing like barbershops and salons all to reopen, which I could see that being a part of phase one and then proper social distancing. They're adding bowling alleys. Yep. Do you know, do you know what happens in a bowling alley? People share the same shoes. You touch balls, stick your finger in balls. And then another person come and sticks their finger in the balls. And, and then the ball's just rolling around these dirty John, pins John and in the back big end. I'm a big bowler, man. <laughs> yeah, but like, I had my fingers in so many balls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, who wants to go bowling? Yeah. Why are nail salons on the emergency list to reopen? I'm okay with that. Because you I'd know love all to get a haircut. these, like, southern, like, I need to go to my hairdresser. <laughs> southern I need Bell. to get my nails done. You cannot lock me up. <laughs> and I think Tennessee, too, is reopening this week. The best tweet I saw... Uh, was Georgia has a 28-3 lead on COVID, referencing when the Falcons were up 28-3 mm. against the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if you got any PPE, uh, send it to Georgia now. They're going to need it. They're going to need it. Respirators, whatever you got. Because um, what the fuck? I mean, the problem is, this is truly just going to ruin it for everyone. It's like the kid that, you know, won't stop talking in class and yep. can't start recess. Like, yep. California, everyone's just going to stay on longer because... These cases are going to rise in all these places. I have a question for you guys. Do you think, so we all are wearing masks when we're outside and we're out and about. Is that bubble gear? Meaning, I'm sure in LA, SF, New York, you walk outside, everyone's wearing masks. Do you think the rest of the country, it's just like Good 9 question. out of 10? Which I think right now, if you walk out on the streets, 9 out of 10, right? Yeah, I think yeah, it's probably 9 out of 10 the other way. <laughs> yeah. In those other places. Yeah. Getting, getting pulled back from back home, it's like half. Yeah. It's not nearly as high, but, but you're again, not, they're you're Wisconsin. We're usually like two weeks like back. Georgia. Athens, Georgia. Georgia is oh, 10 out of 10, no, no mask. Yeah. I wear no mask. I'll, I'll, <laughs> these barbecue ribs will protect me. Yeah. And I still This don't diabetes will be <laughs> diabetes. Oh, oh my God. I was watching. My the, insulin shot. I mean, every day the, the White House does a press conference. It's Trump and his, his troops. Do you see how close they stand together? And then no one's wearing a mask. No one's wearing a mask. Yeah. They're not all quarantined in the White House. Those people are going home to their families. They're literally doing the exact opposite yeah. of what the whole country is being required to do. Yeah, I don't get how it's not like rampant through those. Well, that's why uh, someone who's a <laughs> supporter of him is like, he's not wearing a mask. Why the hell should I? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. My Maybe body, my fake. choice. I agree. <laughs> Screw this shit, man. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out, whatever. Unless you want to go to Whole Foods and they say, get your ass out of here. I mean, I'll tell you, yeah, true. I'll tell you the one thing that is pretty crazy that I'm curious to see long term is they think that the number of people who were infected and were asymptomatic and just built up antibodies is like way, way, way higher yeah. than they ever imagined. Well, we'll I think we'll know that really quickly because testing is now becoming prevalent, right? Like yeah. we're finally going to all have to go get tested and get an understanding of what's going on. It looks like there's going to be an in-home test soon yeah, for something. $119. But what's scary about the antibody thing is we're way too early in the virus's life. So if the, you could have peak antibodies a week after you contract it, yep. but we don't know if those antibodies stay permanently, meaning yep. you, they could disappear and then you potentially don't have the immunity to it. Yeah. So 
the problem is everything we're doing right now is on such limited data. We're making decisions based on limited data. And uh, there's no, there's no way, like, other way to think about it. We're just guessing state yeah. to state. And some people are going to die along the way. My body, my choice. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's what I. That's what it comes down to. to me. I'm gonna go see a movie this weekend in Georgia <laughs> with no mask. I mean, if you go to a fucking movie on Friday in Georgia, you are. It'll crazy. be slim. So, but he, he, here's the thing that the movie theaters came out and said, like, okay, we open up. What's the liability here? If someone gets corona at watching what's yeah. out this weekend, I don't know, like nothing. No, no, what is it? World, world, world Tour, right? World Tour, right? Yeah. And you get corona, you're going. Who are you going to sue? You're not going to sue the governor of Georgia. You're going to sue AMC. I would sue trolls too. Yeah, those yeah, those little ugly creatures. Because they said that like LA Fitness and like gyms and stuff will open. And like, what do you do if you're a nationwide chain and you can open? Like, if you're Olive Garden, you open it. So I guess don't mm. any gym. I'm sure I never read the fine print, but I'm sure it says like if you die. Working out, we're not responsible. Like you have a heart attack at the gym. Totally, that's yeah. where you gotta get spot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like, but like, yeah, yeah. But like, what about Olive Garden? Like, do you make a judgment as a corporation, or yeah. do you make a judgment regionally? The CEO of Olive Garden is like, you know what? Those people in Georgia don't give a fuck. Yeah. Open up. They're like, we've been killing people long before this thing. <laughs> yeah. And we give unlimited breadsticks. Yeah. We are, are we cause cause heart disease. They better <laughs> honor the people who bought the lifelong uh, supply of pasta. Deal. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Oh, that's a thing. Yeah. Jesus Christ. They've done more damage than Corona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, how about this? Do we have some more aid coming or what? Like, are they passing? AIDS? Well, actually, at this point, AIDS might not be so bad. <laughs> I don't remember ever locking down for AIDS. Yeah. Um, aid? Do we got some aid, some financial aid? Is Congress passing some more yeah, stuff? Yeah. We got some good news. Okay. The Democrats put a bill on the on the table for another half a billion. I don't know why it's the number so light. Half a trillion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Half a trillion. Yeah. Sorry. Half a Still trillion. Not enough. Just go to one. Go to seven. Please go to one. I would say go to seven. Go to seven. We, so, we've made it clear we can print money endlessly okay, without so, any consequence. Okay, okay. So I'm just telling you what they, they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you could take it up with Chuck Schumer. Uh, Chuck? Mitch McConnell. He may kill me. Yeah. You're darky ass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my God. $310 billion are added to the pay. PPP program. Mm -hmm. So that I think is going to probably go into effect, let's say next week. Mm -hmm. So in two weeks, people like five, four that has not seen the light of day on PPP will probably hopefully make it into that batch of loans. Mm -hmm. But my guess is I know one person officially that a very close person. So I can verify it's real. Got the money in the bank account today. Got it. And so that's like, you know, I've heard from other people, yeah, hey, I got the money, but I can't verify that. Today, we know someone that actually got the money. So that money will get dispersed over the next seven to 10 days. Yeah. And then the $310 billion should take care of the second tranche. Yeah, the regional bank people got it last week, the PPP. Yeah. It's now trickling to the people with national banks. Exactly. And so, you know, we'll have to see. How are we getting punished by the damn bank we chose? Yeah. Yeah. It's a joke. I mean, I think this thing has just really exposed all the, like, weaknesses. And for a lot of businesses, that week or two is the difference between oh, making yeah. payroll, paying vendors, staying in business. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and, and we're already seeing it. Shake Shack got $10 million for the PPP, and everyone raised hell, and now they're returning the money. But like, how do they get the ten million before any of the small businesses? Because it's a racket. The whole thing's a racket. According to Forbes, seventy-one publicly traded companies got paycheck protection funding before it ran out. Yeah, so and, and publicly traded companies also. Um, Ruth Chris got twenty million. Um, J. Alexander Holdings, a casual dining company, took in fifteen million. So all these big. What is companies, J. Alexander Holdings? I've never heard of that. It's a big company that people are up, are up in arms about <laughs> getting yeah. money. Let's see. I'm pulling up right now who they I, are. I, I have this full list of all the publicly traded companies. I mean, these guys are getting $5 million, $10 million, $10 million. These are publicly traded companies that are supposed to be profitable, that should have cash on the balance sheet, that have access to regular debt that small businesses do not that's, have access to. That's the most important point. A publicly traded company like Shake Shack has access to capital markets. They can go shore up 
a hundred million dollars. Sure, the interest rate be higher than it typically would have been three months ago. Do you second. have access? We don't even have that. We have zero access to anything like that. Yeah. No bank would ever give any of our businesses debt unless we secured it against the home, real estate, yeah. or hard cash sitting in an escrow. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucked up, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is, man. Damn it. It's just, it, I'm telling you, the fraud that's going to happen from the PPP and the SBA disaster loans is going to be nuts. I mean, nuts. I mean, I just don't understand how this all sorts out. It's going to be pretty brutal. Yeah. I mean, th there's a guy in um, Arkansas, and I appreciate his honesty. He's like, I'm getting the money. I don't technically need it. I'm very profitable and healthy, but my accountant told me to do it. I'm going to take the money and put it in a bank account. I'm going to use it for payroll and I'm not going to pay it back. Yeah. Yeah, why not? I don't well, think... I mean, I mean, if you can. Yeah. I'm not mad at him. Yeah. yeah I'm not, I'm not, not mad, mad at box anyone, of, but... I had does... masks when all this happened. I didn't send any anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying, if you got it, yeah. keep it. Exactly. Yeah, and the thing is, they're not explaining any of the fine print yeah. and they're not sending anyone to jail. At least I don't think so. No. Like two years from now. They're, you know, they can't they'll, they'll grab the one guy. No, they're, they're going to they're, they're they're grab small business yeah. people and throw them in jail. And then J. Alexander Holdings is going to snifle away 10, 15 mil and not pay it back. Like, I wonder what loans uh, we work applied for. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, I hope the, oh, at least when they see SBA yeah. sees that, they at least get a good chuckle. I'm like, fuck these guys. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Um, and somebody's suing. Did we talk about that? No. There's class action lawsuits. So banks are already getting sued over the, the kind of the frustration over the process because, I mean, if you're a Wells Fargo customer like we are, it's a joke, right? Like we mean we we missed out on the first round of money because Wells Fargo, a bunch of cr criminals, and so this is now Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, all the people which most of America banks with these huge banks, mm -hmm. none of them are able to execute these loans. So the other thing I didn't realize is I thought the banks were doing this for free. Mm -hmm. Why would they do that? They actually got a PPP loan. Yes. And so these banks, apparently I saw Mark Cuban uh, tweet this. I haven't verified the number, but he's saying there's 17 and a half billion dollar of fees being collected by these banks to administer these loans. Do you know if you're no offense to anyone that's a bank loan manager, but it ain't fucking rocket science to fucking give out these loans. No. And they're asking too many questions. Yeah. Just give the loan out. Yeah. Like what are you doing? They ask so many questions. <laughs> I mean, like you don't like, ask what, them. We need it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is my business. I need the money. Yeah. My business, my money. Yeah. Jesus. God, I mean, it's just insane. You're collecting $17.5 billion in fees and you're asking me questions? Send the, f the only question you should be asking, account number, routing info, shut the fuck up. I agree. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's insane. If you're collecting fees, all you are is a roadblock. Yeah, totally. Seventeen and a half billion dollars of fees. Open it up. And the IRS, I know they're. I mean, they have all our bank account information. The government could actually give us the money. Yeah. Like they have all the information yeah. they need. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, there's just some lady named Susan in the way. Yeah, you know, Karen. Oh, Susan. Karen, is that a real name? No, but you know, that's yeah, the joke. Karen. And, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, Karen. yeah. It's always a Karen. Yeah. It's always, yeah, all you got to do is get through yeah. Karen. That's the, there's yeah. no reason. Yeah. No. But does anything change from this? No, do, nothing do we... changes. And I don't, like, it's, I'm sure there's some listeners out there that were counting on this money two weeks ago, a week ago. And you, people are going to go out of business because the government couldn't figure out how to get all this money to people. So it's literally conflicting with the entire intention of this. Just put Donald Trump's name on the check and send it over. Yes. Yeah. Did you hear that like checks got delayed? The twelve hundred dollars got delayed because Trump needed to add his name to them. I saw that. I, and it's said, probably like, my fucking check that I haven't gotten yet. Well, because you're waiting for that signature. Yeah. Are you sure you yeah. filed tax returns in eighteen? Yes. Are you sure? A thousand percent. Because sure? I got a tax return. <laughs> are those glasses even real? Or those are those no, blue lights? Blue light. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's no prescription. You're Dummy. a fraud. <laughs> Wait, who you're referencing? You're a freaking fraud. fraud. Okay, what about oil? Can we talk about okay. oil? I keep seeing oil is less than zero. 
they were giving away oil yesterday. <laughs> Literally okay. giving it away. They, they were paying you up to thirty dollars to go pick up a barrel of oil. I told Anand, he's like, "Go to Oklahoma. You can go pick it up." Yes. I was like, I could probably fit a hundred barrels in my backyard. We need to buy a thousand. That's the minimum. Minimum is a thousand. Yeah. Uh, I can't have that kind of room. We have a warehouse. Yeah, Stock you just gotta go oil. get it, but you have to be there today to pick it up. Pick it up oh, in shit. Oklahoma. That's guys could have sent me. I would have picked it up. Yeah, I mean, I mean imagine you know, if we just came back with a thousand barrels of oil. Yeah, <laughs> just get a hundred U-Hauls and head on out. Yeah, you could have been paid forty dollars to go collect a thousand barrels. For, oh, okay. Because the contracts yeah. went right. negative. Yeah, right. So let's just explain this because it was like typical shock news media, not understanding what the hell was going on. Yeah, and. To be fair, I had no clue what was going on, but I actually went and asked people that knew. And all that happened yesterday was the contracts that were expiring in May or to have delivery in May, the May contracts, expired yesterday. Mm -hmm. So if you think about everyone who buys oil, there's no one's using oil at the capacity they were two, three months ago. Mm -hmm. So everyone's storage is full. So that contract to pick up the oil today, no one had any need because all the big buyers have enough oil mm -hmm. and we have no idea when we're going to open up. So it wasn't the actual price of oil. It was the price to go to Oklahoma and pick it up today. Mm -hmm. So people were willing to pay people to not have that contract on. Mm -hmm. And that's why it went negative and it went to zero one. But it was like the media was pretending. And then you had people tweeting like, um, it, it's the it, when the contract was a dollar, but my gallon of uh, gas that I'm pumping is four. I said my my oat milk is more. Yeah, oat milk, and that that like became this Twitter Me. thing, and no one actually wanted to explain what was going on. Yeah, but to be fair, June contracts are already plummeting too. Yeah, June will. I mean, the mo every month we shut down, those contracts are going to plummet. Yeah. But like, if you look at the contracts from nine, ten months from now, they're trading at forty. Yeah, sure. If we're still shut down, that's going to be zero. Yeah. So in June, maybe I should. I have a month to figure out how to pick up some oil. You know, someone uh, someone told me, a listener, I don't know if he wants his name out there, that banks have ships in the ocean storing millions of barrels of oil. The fuck are these banks doing with oil? Because they know. <laughs> it's going to be worth $40. Yeah, they know. I mean, they, they add that to the fees. You know, take the COVID fees, stock up on oil, rich get richer. It's I unbelievable. mean, we should seriously go find someone that has like a big plot of land, someone that's some rich guy that hasn't built their house and just stock 100,000 barrels of oil. Yeah, not a bad I idea. I know there's an environmental standard that you have to... I'm sure Pete knows some farms. Yeah. I got some land for you. A couple okay. acres. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> my my um, buddy did just buy a farm, so there you go. He has some acres in the store. <laughs> yeah, we got a deal for him. Drive down to Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's take a break for an ad. Oh, that's my cue, isn't it? Yes, it is. Do you have it? Okay, yes, I do have it, and there's been a lot of conflict lately. You know, I'm getting a lot of love, love the energy, some hate. And I'm sick of it. Okay. So today we're bringing back a little bit of energy, oh, no. but not too much energy that we piss anybody off. Okay. Guys, I'm back again to talk to you about Buffy. Again, I'm sleeping wonderful. I've never had such good, good sleep in my life. I don't know if it's because of the weed last night or because of Buffy, but I slept good. Wasn't I, even sweating. I'll venture out to say you've probably never even had a comforter since you left your parents' house. I do have a comforter, <laughs> right? So well, you, this might be your first comforter you own. No, no, no. no. This is <laughs> this is my second comforter here. Okay. Uh, but this one is. I, I always have the issue. I always have to have the one leg out thing every single night because I get so hot. Look at me. Yeah. I'm a big guy, but this this shit I can stand underneath it all night long. Okay. Do you That's have good. a bed frame or you just mattress on the? No, ground? I did used to have just a mattress when I got here, but then I went over to IKEA. I mean, D had bed no frame. bed frame for the first 15 years of adulthood. Ah, yeah, easily. So you can't talk shit to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just... my single life was hysterical. <laughs> I had boxes in my room till I was like, till my met my wife. So where are people <laughs> going to sleep better? That's, that's scary. Uh, you can go over to Buffy.com. Guys, no, no Buffy.co. Oh, guys, you can go over to... Tim and do that again. Guys, you can go head over to Buffy.co. Uh, their comforters are 100% plant-based and super breathable. As you know, I've been sleeping so, so well because uh, of the lack of sweat it causes me. Uh, this is softer than cotton. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you really love it, you can head over and use the code GROUPCHAT for $20 off your first order. order and if you really hate it, you 
you can set it back completely free. Use the code ANAND, A-N-A-N, D as in David. You can use the code D. It's the shortest. D-E-E. Uh, code drama, right? You said? Yeah. <laughs> And All we right. also, we've had a lot of Kathy's who've already bought it and DM doesn't message us and they're yeah. pumped about it. Yeah, I, I saw a few friends of mine actually purchased uh, Buffy as well. I think my guess is looks like Buffy's locked in for two years. <laughs> Buffy, we expect <laughs> that, yeah. The big, big dollars. Like a lot software of business. Yeah. 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 50X multiple on <laughs> Buffy. <laughs> yeah. Buffy. That's right. Buffy's going to have to start shipping out some big payments soon. <laughs> and I want a portion. You Buffy. get nothing. Shut up. Oh, yeah, you're damn. Gonna, unfortunately, this is how this works. Uh, <laughs> you just show up. You get nothing. Yeah. No, I'm right. That's what I signed up for. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Pete. Uh, next up, Kim Jong Un. Is he dying or what's going on? <laughs> this we, is the weirdest news like story of the last 24 hours. So what happened? Like people said he was gravely ill, and then obviously they reported he's perfectly healthy. No. So I think the U.S. and other countries got some sort of intelligence information that he went through a surgery and that he was near brain dead or he was in grave condition. South Korea put out a statement saying he was fine. And he just got 17 holes in one in a game of golf. Exactly. Yeah. But I don't know what, it was South Korea forced to put that out by North Korea. We're going to launch a nuke if you don't put this out. I, I, I think something's happened to this little fat so. <laughs> I, I mean, mean little I rocket man. Yeah. This is not, let's be clear. If this is actually going on, this is a coup, a good old fashioned coup. Yeah, because that means I mean, yeah. what, his he, brother's dead. What, they just gave him brother. a lobotomy, like he went in for a checkup? Or they just like smoked him. I mean, he might be already dead, and the new regime is just trying to figure it out. It's I don't scary. Know. It's scary to see what happens here because the uncertainty of North Korea is not good for the world. And Hopefully, if someone's coming into power, they're more rational. But gauging by history, they haven't been. It, the concern is like he doesn't have any more siblings, right? Because he killed his brother. I think he's got a sister, right? Okay, unless his sister smoked him. Yeah. Well, if, if he just got smoked, uh, he, she I definitely think, got I, smoked. I, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure he killed his brother with like sarin, like yeah. some sort of chemical, In Singapore, right? In the airport, yeah. Malaysian yeah. airport. Yeah. Yeah. They, gave gas. Like, yes. they sprayed in his face and he died. <laughs> I, I think it was in the liquid or something. Okay. Whatever, it was a painful death. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I I mean, I would say hopefully it's true. <laughs> yeah. Do you think but Dennis Rodman could hit him on WhatsApp? Like, yo, you alive, bro? Yeah. yeah. They probably both are very similar now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just two friends with some brain damage. I reckon he was just, he, I mean, they're... Uh, notoriously huge Bulls fans. He just got too excited after the last dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just had an aneurysm. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, can't wait to hear what's happening there. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. Um, along the lines of, two, we were talking about people getting these PPP loans who don't need them. Uh, one of them is Shake Shack. Yeah. And they got $10 million. And they're publicly saying they got it, they don't need it, they're giving it back. Yep. I got a better idea. Send it to, just send it Send it over here. What's so Send it to screwed some up? People who need it. So screwed up about this is that the way this whole thing uh, kind of lays out from a financial structure, the them returning the money doesn't go back into the pool of loans that they can actually even give out. So this is going back to the U.S. government. Right. Oh God, it's so stupid. I mean, just the way PPP is rolling out should be enough to realize we already know this, but structurally the country is. Built to keep the rich rich. Yeah. They're first. What's crazy? Even Dan in a pandemic. Danny Meyer, the CEO of, and founder of Shake Shack, was on 60 Minutes, you know, talking about the struggle. He was gladly going to take this money if it didn't get public. Of course. Right? And now, you know, now people are going to parade him because he gave the money back. But he only gave the money back because he got called out. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well. Boycott Shake Shack. I don't know. Their Schoenbergers are pretty good. They're That's, that's the gross. That's gross. Yeah. You have that one? Look Why would Tim. you eat that? Tim's in. See, ha see how happy Tim just Really? Yeah. I've Tim had Shake Shack. No, you really have a mustache. I've had Shake that Shack once just in my life, up. That thing and just... it was at a birthday party where they had, like, the truck. Yeah. Yeah. The truck. The mushroom they burger. Do they have okay. veggie anything? The I mushroom just had a burger. grilled cheese. Oh, that's what the mushroom burger is? Yeah. yeah. It's really yeah. good, actually. Yeah, that's beat it. Gotta be gross. <laughs> if you're gonna meat eaters going to Shake Shack ordering shrooms and beets? Don't worry about my lifestyle. It's questionable. you're gonna eat, like, a veggie, just... Go to a, yeah, what are you maybe doing? every <laughs> once in a while I enjoy Especially a shrimp burger. At Shake Shack, they make great burgers, guys. If and and by the way, if I and I had a discussion with an Uber driver once, we were driving by the Shake Shack in West Hollywood, and he's like, 
fuck Shake Shack. And I go, why? He literally said out of nowhere, fuck Shake Shack. And I'm like, why? He's like, I'm going to pay $10 when I can go to In-N-Out, which is like three fifty, and it's be- tastes better. Right. That's why I get the shroom burger. Where do you guys stand In-N-Out? on the, the burger wars? I know me and are In-N-Out. super in and out is trash. You guys this. do not know burgers. I didn't if say you're that. I know I'm you're not. You. I'm not saying you. That's Shut an up. insane mm-hmm. statement. In and out is trash. Oh my god! That's a in and out is literally argument. like. You, I mean, you're, I would expect to get that when I go into jail. That's what you're I not think getting of it. that. That's a controversial. Well, let opinion. me tell you one thing about jail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't have it. So yeah. I've, I've they should just be serving. That. I've heard people say like, "Oh, I like Five Guys. I like this," but no one's ever said it's trash. In and yeah. out's trash. Yes. <laughs> look at look at him. He has <laughs> fake glasses <laughs> on. Fake glasses on. Like, <laughs> yeah. Come on, roll you guys have never had good burgers. I mean, there's no way. I don't What's even a good eat burger? meat, like, but I've never heard that statement, so I know it's reaffirming. Because you live in a bubble. I know what I've heard. You literally no. haven't left. You're one of those guys that's like, no, <laughs> Nate's down on Main Street in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. You can't beat him. You Nothing's know? coming from your state. Let's <laughs> yes, Nate. bro. Culver's. No. <laughs> yes. Nothing from is Wisconsin massive, is coming bro. out of there besides cheese curds. Okay? No. Yeah. Culver's makes one of the best burgers. No. If you told and me, it's if, nationally known. If you told me Shake Shack's better, Five Guys is better, and Sonic. But in and outs okay. I'd be like, okay, fine. That's yeah, a fair yeah, yeah. opinion. If you would have said okay, we would have trusted you. That's untrustworthy. Trash, prison food. Animal style fries at Bro, In-N-Out do not are ever, insane. Insane. ever come in saying that their fries are good. That is literal oh cardboard. Oh my God, they're animal They are, are gone. gone. The greatest things on Nasty. Earth. No, I've had them so several Pete, times. You know what? Gross. Uh, okay, this, is, this conversation's over. So it's going We're downhill. done with this shit. No, shut up. You know what? And he's banned from Coachella. <laughs> yeah. You can't go to Coachella without eating in and out yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, fact. I'm not going with you guys anyway. And no yeah. more free weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go look at my weed stash. Yeah, we're charging you back for that. Yeah. I just see it in the invoice. Yeah, we're going to weigh that shit. Okay, guys. Mike. I'm going to open up a GoFundMe. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're ridiculous. All right, uh, let's talk about how Uber Uber is pivoting. They're doing uh, delivering, it looks like, retail packages, uh, personal packages. They're just, fuck, I mean, you want something to deliver, <laughs> yeah, <whatever. laughs> hit up Uber, man. <laughs> They'll take whatever you got. So I, I've used Uber a tremendous amount in the last two weeks, actually. Not once have I sat in the ride. To get things. Just sending things all over. I mean, I got a package from pretty far away yesterday that I needed in my house. It was 23 bucks. Really? And I'm talking it was like 35 miles, 40 miles away. Because Lyft is still expensive. I've had to do that with Lyft. But how Since far I you- switched to Uber? I mean, I use Lyft and Uber, both of them. So a little controversy over Uber. They started this thing where on the basic ride, you they give you a range. And an estimate, but you don't know the actual cost. So they're like, ah, anywhere between thirteen and seventeen dollars. I'm okay. That's a big with that. swing. That's a big when you swing. can just go right on the lift and it's like fourteen dollars. Right. So you That's get a guarantee. A, I don't believe you ever since that. They have robbed me so, multiple and times. So Uber, what Uber's rolling out is a program they piloted a few years ago, which is Uber Rush. And it didn't work then, but maybe during a pandemic it will work now. Yeah, I, I like that Uber's taking the uh, initiative to like figure it out because I don't care what anyone says, ride sharing is going down in the next year, no matter what. Like, even if things reopen up, unless you have no other choice or like we really figure out how to like, because think about how many things you touch in an Uber. You touch the door handle. And how many people are in there? Uh, how many people? Disgusting people. <laughs> Bunch yeah. of Pete's. Bunch of peats. Imagine getting into an Uber after peat. Just Jeez. smells like shroom burger. Shroom burger. He probably just jerked off. Uh, like Culver's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like the 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 Next time you want some shrooms or beets, go to <laughs> sweet green. Yeah. <laughs> go to fucking this guy just smells like pot and shroom burgers. Oh, Pete was in this Uber. Yeah. <laughs> but I like shirt. it. I like the idea. I just think the price has to be sharp enough. Like, yep. yeah. You know, if it's like three dollars to send something to like your house or my house, cool. I'd be sending stuff three all day. But great. don't they already lose money on that? Yeah, but they're already losing money. Lose some more. Fuck what does it matter? Okay. At least we're using it. Yeah. Okay. I didn't, I'm like I don't know when I'll ever go back inside of an Uber. Yeah, no, I don't trust it. That's one of the least trustworthy places to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Because I also hate any. We talked about this, but anyone. It's the fact that the driver has come in contact with 27 people that day. Yeah. All right. It's rough. And those 27 people have been exposed to 100 people a day? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So you just getting in one Uber is like shaking 3,000 people's hands. For real, instantly. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, okay. Um, you wonder who's not having any trouble at all, not even a little bit? Netflix. Yeah. Subscriber growth, 
It's way up. Way up. They were expecting 8 million new subscribers. They got 16 million instead. I mean, that is so absurd. Absurd. I mean, like, who are these people that don't have Netflix? I get people who don't have ESPN. Yeah. But who doesn't have Netflix? Is it just people that were just sharing their accounts and now they're like, fuck it, I got to get it? That's probably what you, it is, and, right? Uh, you know, a lot of households probably... How many users do you get with one account? I don't Good know. Good question. Is it like three or four? Do you know? Four. 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 But you can... Right now, you can only use two of them at the same time. Okay. So, okay, so, so, Tim, so said you, Tim said you get four, he thinks, but you can only use two at the same time. So this is the only explanation in the U.S. how they grew so much. Everyone's quarantined. If... Uh, dad's watching one thing, son's watching something else, the algorithm's screwed. Yeah. So maybe they just added another account to for mom because she's like, I don't want your guys' taste yeah. screwing my algorithm up. That's yeah, the only yeah. thing I can think of. Yeah, I mean, it's cheap enough. You might as well get it. And I, I but... Because you, you've eliminated all dine-out expenses, movie theaters, anything outside of the home. So there's more cash to be spent on things like this. Yeah. And the other interesting thing, I, I'll give my take on the streaming wars because I've been, you know, I subscribe to all of them like you guys. Netflix, to me, won on the content war of quarantine because it won. It is just a better platform. Like finding something on HBO or Showtime or whatever the hell other services, Prime, Hulu, is just not easy. The trending thing has changed my life. Made very easy, like, oh, this is what everyone else is watching. Uh, the trailers, uh, first I found very annoying. I sat the other night, 45 minutes. Th- I usually watch a TV. I just watched <laughs> trailers and called it a day. Yeah. It was after you smoked yeah. weed and drank <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I stumbled on Black as Fuck, which is amazing, or Black AF. It is incredible TV show. Yeah. Everyone's raving about that. It's hysterical. Yeah. And I just think that, like, Netflix, to me, just solidified the king of streaming. And then it's going to take... So much effort for anyone else to catch up anytime in the near future. Because, like, we, I, I, I went on Disney. I assumed there's stuff that, like, I'd want to watch on Disney. And I assumed incorrectly there's nothing I want to watch on Disney. Not one movie, no. not one show, nothing. That's not you. That's more for the masses. The Avengers crowd. Yeah. The yeah, dummies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids, the superhero Star crowd. Wars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kids yeah. and dorks. Yeah. <laughs> Kids and dorks. <laughs> okay. Um... All right. Well, good for Netflix, man. I mean, the pandemic is anytime something is really bad for a lot of people, it's going to also be really good for some. But what's interesting is the stock exploded after hours. And I just checked this now. It's flat. What's really? th- That's weird. That is weird. That's not a good sign for the stock market then. Um, and the other thing, the first slate of companies that are starting to report earnings that include some pandemic data – all are the good ones. So I wonder if the stock market is just going to get fooled by it. Like Netflix reported, Snapchat actually beat at user ads, but there's no way their ad business could be up. It might have been locked in earlier. Snap it up 20% today after I hours. saw that. That's nuts. Oh, yeah. uh, well. Can't figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah, you, there's no you, point in even trying. Yeah. There, there's, there's an incredible video of Dave Portnoy because he's like, he just can't. He's so frustrated. He, um, he, he, his tweet was, he's like, I'm not out of moves yet, but I'm pretty damn close. <laughs> and then he starts talking in front of his computer. He's like, I tried the, the fastball, curveball, screwball. <laughs> Is he just like publicly losing money? Yeah. And that's the other He's losing so much and money. He's, he's actually losing this, right? A hundred percent. I think he's... He's he was like okay, it's a, I'm putting a million bucks in. Expensive. Yeah. Oh, not even that. He probably thought I'm gonna put a million bucks in. Oh, maybe lose fifty grand, make fifty grand, but whatever. It's gonna be great content. And then we know it's addicting. Next thing you know, you keep dumping money into it and it's gone. Yeah, it's it's easy to lose a lot of money really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He quoted something today. He quoted like a tweet saying that Business Insider something reported like six hundred thousand he's lost or some shit like that. Six hundred forty-seven thousand, and. Did he say I lost more? He just said, "Yeah, it's true." He did, no, I think he just laughed. That's let me let me stuff. find it real quick. Gosh, okay. He had like no real response to it. Well, I mean, incredible entertainment. Yeah, I watched the unboxing thing. He does these unboxings. He cut his finger open. He cut his yeah. knuckle, bone, yeah. and everything. Got right down he to the bone. I should say. Yeah, he has a picture. So like, I don't really watch like two. I just kind of like passively absorb barstool content. But yeah. just the like, I saw he sliced his finger off. He his goldfish died <laughs> on the floor. Someone said he him tried a to commit suicide. He's committed suicide. Jumped out of the bowl. Like it's been the craziest, like entertaining shit. And I don't even really yeah. like. I just like scrolling and like. 
Yeah. So good. And then he was oh. berating his employees. He needed something done. And only That's like so one bad. or two of them responded. And he's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Uh, yeah. And one of, them, <laughs> one of them cut off his finger. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. He had to go to the hospital. Oh, my God. Because uh, Jimmy had to go to the hospital. And he cut off, uh, cut off his finger. <laughs> getting the boxes put away. How wild. Okay. Um and then last piece of news, Google, who is one of uh, San Francisco's largest uh, property owners, uh, is slowing that down a little bit. Mm-hmm. So what's happening? You think they're, have they just reached peak? Are they pre- preparing for something? I mean, what, why, why would somebody that big be slowing down? I mean, I think they've come to terms with, first they announced two weeks ago that they're going to slow on the hiring. Yep. Mm-hmm. Their, their revenue is going to get pummeled. Pummeled. They announced also today that they're waiving all fees on Google Shopping for merchants to just encourage them to right. use it and use it, use it, hopefully get addicted to it. Mm-hmm. And then six months, they'll turn on the fees. Their, their ad revenue is going to get pummeled. They have no reason to continue on this hiring binge. They have to cut their cost. They're two, they're, I think they're either acquiring or negotiating 2 million square feet of office space. Mm-hmm. And they're saying NSF. NSF. I mean, this also is the trend that, I mean, when the, so these big tech companies like Apple, Google, Facebook, they own their real estate. So Google bought a huge building in New York. They own a ton of real estate down here in Playa Vista. So they're big real estate uh, holders. Uh, I think on top of just knowing that business is going to slow is work from home for companies like Google. It's seamless. Yeah, that's It's easy. engineering. It's like... They're already familiar with the technology. There's no ramp up. They've already been using this stuff. Those dorks can work from home. Yes. They're great at it. This is like devastating for uh, any real estate uh, owner of yeah. buildings because if these guys are doing it and they have the most money, what is everyone else going to do? It's just going to fall. Well, I was listening to, uh, I finally finished the Chamath podcast. Yeah. And he was talking about, he was like uh, talking about Silicon Valley. He's like, San Francisco? Why would you live in San Francisco? (laughs) Walk over a pile of feces, stuff that I've been saying for years. (laughs) Finally, smart people have now picked up on it. And he's like, you live in LA and you just fly up to San Francisco when you have a meeting. You don't go, you don't want to live in San Francisco. And I think that that's a, that's going to be a big San Francisco and New York issue. Cause there's this mass exodus going to happen from New York city after being like essentially trapped on an Island. I think people are going to be like, uh, I ain't cut out for this life. Because mm-hmm. we all know something like this could happen again. Do you want to be in December in the freezing cold in a pandemic in New York City? Yeah. Okay. He had another good point. Um, he was talking about he spends millions of dollars with Skadden Arps, the He's big lawyer. Uh, it's one of like the most prestigious law firm. He's like, I spend millions of dollars for them to do my work. What's one of the outside of people, the only expense lawyers have is expensive office space. Yeah. Yep. He's like, why do you, why am I paying more for my legal bills? Cause you guys think you need to be on fifth Avenue or in Wherever. central park West, whatever the hotspots and office spaces in New York are. He's like, cut my bill by 15%. You're going to make more money if you get rid of all these stupid leases. Yeah. Yep. He's smart. <laughs> Commercial real estate's rough, <laughs> rough, rough for so long. Yeah. I mean, probably forever. The, like, I agree. I think the good news is is all this property, commercial real estate has like the best location, especially in places like LA, New York. We have a sh- housing shortage. Yeah. Repurpose it for residential. Prices are going to plummet yeah. and it'll be affordable to live in big cities again. So I think uh, whoever listened to the Mikey Taylor pod when he was on, I hope you listened. No, don't buy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. He called that early. Yeah. It's funny. Like he had some success with those early like rants. Yeah. And so now he just rants his tits off. Yeah. He yeah. Just, everything is like, so what does this mean for money? What does this yeah, mean? Yeah, for, yeah. And like people love it. His TikTok too on like business advice. Yeah. Really good. He's really figured it out. Yeah. So he stuck with TikTok. I know that was one of his initiatives when he came here. He's yeah. still on it. Yeah. <laughs> he's still on it. I don't know. I haven't checked. I don't know like how successful it's been. I think he's still trying to kind of crack the code. He yeah. gets a lot of love on Instagram, like TV, like those long, like sitting in his Tesla. Yeah. Here's what this all means. Yeah. You know, videos. I like Is it. he giving stock advice too? Um, he does give some stock advice. I think loosely. I think that's yeah. not his area of expertise, so he yeah. doesn't go too hard, but yeah, he's, yeah. Good for him. He's all about it. Yeah. He's very uh, optimistic in the uh, crash. Okay. <laughs> um, as seen on social. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's talk about what we saw on social media this week that everyone needs to check out. D, what'd you find? I saw um, B 
Beyond Meat is now selling patties to Starbucks in China. And I find that interesting. China's a pretty, as we know, experimental eating culture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, thanks. See coronavirus. <laughs> yes. Do you think, and it made me think, do you think people in mainland China, like the educated, you know, higher class people are like, why the fuck are we? I don't know where we don't know what's what's in this food. Let's just be vegan or be like. Do you think yeah. there'll be like this shift in the way people eat food in China amongst the the rich? So I think yes, because what we've seen in the last twenty five years, U.S. companies went and set up shop KFC, Pizza Hut, and the Chinese consumed it all. Love it. and it's correlated with diabetes and heart disease in China. So they're suffering now from the mm-hmm. same stuff that Americans do. Mm-hmm. So now Beyond Meat's going to be the golden parachute. Come in. Yeah. Save the health crisis in China. Yeah. Heroes. Yep. Yeah. Just put the bats down, man. That's <laughs> yeah. all I care about. Beyond Jesus. should just do plant-based bats. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a plant-based bat. Yeah. It's shaped like a bat. Its mouth yeah. is open. You can see its fangs. Yeah. You can Beyond bat. Thing. Beyond bat. Look at its intestines. Yeah. How much would it take for Pete to you to eat bat soup? Fourteen dollars. <laughs> he would just do it. Yeah, he's not afraid. How of much would it, it take for you to have if bat soup like it's here? It was fresh from the wet market in China. I you would just do it. I can just eat the whole for thing. IG fame. Nope. I can eat the whole thing. Yep. And I can guarantee you five thousand likes on your Instagram. Wow. Say no more. Fifty-two dollars. <laughs> I like pretty exactly. But I'm not going any lower. <laughs> We're definitely getting you that insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Give me the insurance. Give me $52. I'd sip on that soup. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Do Pardon? I have to bite the bat? Uh, yeah, you have to eat the whole thing. Oh. Whatever they do, you have to do. You get to take the bat home, though. <laughs> yeah, the, the, out, yeah, the, the outer, the, the exoskeleton. The, the wings. <laughs> the, the wings. wings. Put it on your wall. <laughs> okay. I'm in. I'm convinced. <laughs> okay. Anand, what would you find? Uh, let's go back to Florida. Oh, no. Okay. This one's, I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, parks are closed, but someone couldn't stay away. Someone? Mm-hmm. Tom Brady. Wow. He got caught working out in a closed park. A city official had to come over and say, sir, you got to leave. Wow. They kicked out the goat? They kicked out the goat. He's now in Tampa Bay because he's on the Buccaneers now. That would Florida never happen man. in Boston. They would not touch Tom Brady. They would not touch Tom Brady. They would literally, the police department of Boston would have barricaded with their bodies yes. and let the goat just do his thing. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Tom. Say, look at yeah. that spiral. Yeah. How dare you come in here? Man, I can't believe he doesn't have enough land on his property in Tampa Bay. Yeah, that's weird. Why are you in a public park even at risk of getting kicked out by a city of I mean, you, you're, Tampa you're, Bay real estate's got to be cheap. How about you're like really famous? It's probably not safe for Tom Brady just to be like walking... Yeah, oh, there's well. a lot wrong with this story. Imagine if you were a Giants fan. You just go cough on him. Yeah, why not? It's that easy. <laughs> George is okay, well, off to a rough start in Tampa Bay, I guess. Yeah. Oh. And that's our time. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, mine is uh, just some super fun uh, casual content. Uh, Kevin Hart, who I'm a big fan of, has been doing uh, stories Where? on his uh, Instagram TV. And he just tells great stories from his uh, oh, journey. And it's just, he just sits down and says, here's a new story. I think that he, when this all started, he's like, I'm going to tell a new story like every day or whatever. And I think this lockdown is going to go on much longer than he expected. So he's going to run out of stories. But um, yeah, it's pretty funny. He has really good stories about like meeting Beyonce. and. I have a great idea for our newsletter. Because one of the challenges I'm having is I'm hearing about things after the fact on Instagram or like stuff that I would have loved to watch Kevin Hart. I follow Kevin Hart yep. and I don't even know that he's doing this because there's just too much yep. content, right? We could have a directory. Yeah. Like we should put out like Instagram things that are happening. Like the Teddy Riley uh, baby face thing. I got on too late and I missed like 99% of it. But like the things that are happening on social media, we should totally create our listing because Instagram does a horrendous job of curating what's going on on the platform, right? Whereas like when you go on Netflix, the platform, it tells you these are trending. These are right for you. These are the top 10 in America. I may look at the top 10 in America and say, I'm not going to watch any of this, but at least I know. Yep. They might be falling behind like big time. What are they doing with all this data? Every like Instagram. Yeah. 
like yeah. TikTok has perfected it. They're giving the content that you want to a T. Yep. Instagram, I Instagram should know I like Kevin Hart. Instagram should yeah, be notified. They, they they know what lives we've been on. Like I've been on a bunch of like famous people's lives, like the the DJs and whatnot. Like yep. start giving me notifications when other folks like them go live. Yeah. So if we did a behind. segment on the newsletter where every day you guys, each each of you, all four of you guys, including Pete, text and say something that you saw on Instagram that day that you liked and we'll curate it, okay. would you guys do but that? But I don't know what's going on. You want to know what's going on? Yes. So I want, want someone to, to do this for me. On Instagram. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know Pete is doing that. I go by his desk anytime he's watching YouTube videos. Like yeah, he's Pete 12 knows. years old in his room in Wisconsin. Yeah. Everyone will just be David Dobrik did this. Yeah. Yeah. David Dobrik did so, another yeah. thing. We'll David try. Dobrik. David Dobrik, by the way, I've never watched his videos, but I always get served like the preview, like when I'm going on YouTube. He's got a lot of hot girls with him. A lot of hot girls. Bro, Madison Beer wants to date him and he's just like, no. Uh, is that that's so that's shtick. The There's all these like supposedly pretty girls and he just rejects all of them. That's his whole shtick. Maybe he doesn't that's, like women. That's the marketing. Well, he's yeah, well, he's dated a girl, so he's dated I mean, a couple girls. D- that Koshi. doesn't mean you're not. No, but okay. There's this is where it gets, uh, that. It gets sort of tricky here. Yeah. We'll see you guys Friday. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of reached the border there. So we're going to put in the newsletter tomorrow. If you want to sign up, group-chat.com. We're going to put Pete's scene on social where you're going to tell us everything that's going on on Instagram. Yeah, right, but Pete? I don't want it from like a dorky I suburban won't. white kid's perspective. No, that's a sophisticated black man's perspective. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you I got it. from a 35-year-old black man's perspective. I want perspective. every newsletter to be from a different perspective. Yeah. yeah. I know all Today, about it. Today, from human macaroni and cheese, we have David Dobrik. But tomorrow, from a sophisticated I hear African-American about, man, exactly. Teddy Riley. I don't want to hear about David Dobrik. I don't want to hear about Casey Neistat, any of those people. Well, They're not interesting Pete's to me. Pete's out, then. So you don't want, think you don't think I'm that diverse? I want big no. stars. I want actual celebrities. Yeah, not famous people for twenty year olds. Famous people for thirty. Guys, plus. I yeah. understand what you're trying okay. to tell me. I know, but you, reiterating it, I had it from like the first take. But we'll it's okay. see. We'll see what the first one is. Let's see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. We'll okay. see. There we go. All right, guys. I always guys, deliver. That's it. We went long. We appreciate it. Uh, hit up our newsletter at hit up our newsletter group chatcom Jeez. Um, follow us on Instagram. Are we freaking 10,000? No. I even oh, asked uh, a couple of accounts to shout us out. Still shout us out. Not even close. At Group Chat Pod. At Group Chat Pod. The Russians are stopping us. The Russians have conspired. Well, we just hire one of those Russian farms. Guys, it's not always that easy. We tried. It we tried that. Up. We got them all the No, we got to hire the farm to go promote our account. <laughs> so I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. Something on uh, Twitter went uh, viral yesterday. Uh, quote unquote Karen. And it's an account posting saying, K- saying Karen is like saying the N word. Okay. And it's coming from a white woman. Wow. It, someone Shut actually up, looked at, looked at the account, has zero followers, follows 11 people. This is their first post. It was a bot. And then they had a bunch of other bullshit bot accounts retweeting it. Got it, got it momentum because what, foreign country companies countries right. want to do to us is keep us divided of course right and someone in russia figured out karens and said karens are gonna really karens are maga. yeah karens maga <laughs> let's go screw with people and make them all device divisive and i found someone that actually said hey who actually figured that out pretty quickly and said hey guys this is not real this is a bot this, don't get don't make people think this we just need to hire those people Oh, okay. That's yeah, my whole point. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Just start creating controversy. Go to the Thailand computer farm. Get yes. some people going. And no, if we're going to do it, we go going Russian. Ru- you could probably run with the uh, gay David Dobrik. David yeah. Dobrik. Yeah, yeah, David Dobrik. Yeah. That I, hurts Pete's feelings. Yeah, I know. Pete, uh, He's already yeah. had that word. Yeah. Controversy gets clicked. How dare if you? If Pete saw David Dobrik <laughs> on his feet, he'd follow us oh, to find my out God. more. If he didn't know us. A hundred percent. He's he's turning red. Yeah, he's he upset. can't believe it. He's upset. He's like, no, I'm red Peter, literally all day every but day. But Madison Beer loves him. And he won't <laughs> <laughs> I was only making a funny point that had some context to this guys. podcast. What did you say? I said I was only making a point to uh, a point to that because oh. I had some context yeah, on this up. podcast <laughs> that we've recently then talked about. Because you know, be a be. Put the hammer down. Yeah, man. keep what, talking. <laughs> all right, I'm now we've wasted. We're up to an hour and thirty six. Okay, P just picked up a hammer. We got to go. Bye, guys.